In the day's other news, a powerful magnitude 6.4 earthquake shook Southern California today. It was the strongest to rock that area in 20 years. The quake was centered in the Mojave Desert near the town of Ridgecrest, about 150 miles northeast of Los Angeles. California, located along the restless edge of the Pacific Plate, is celebrated for its endless sunshine, iconic coastlines, and world-shaping cities, a place where ambition rises as quickly as its skylines. But beneath that surface appeal lies a far more unstable reality. Earthquakes, water scarcity, and shifting ground quietly influence daily life, whether in the gridlock of Los Angeles or the calm neighborhoods of Fremont. In 2025, Newly analyzed USGS data began pointing to something deeper still, a subtle but growing strain building beneath the state's largest urban centers. This is not the stress of modern living or the pressures of city life. It is literal stress within the earth itself, where geological forces and human infrastructure increasingly overlap. Tectonic movement, groundwater extraction, aging fault systems, and expanding development are interacting in ways that were once considered separate. Recent federal surveys and scientific assessments suggest these forces may be converging beneath California cities, slowly reshaping the ground below without obvious warning. So the question becomes unavoidable. What happens when long accumulating geological pressure meets the demands of modern urban life? If stress is quietly intensifying beneath California's most populated regions, would there be clear signs? Or would the first signal arrive only after the ground itself responds? Chapter 1. California's Hidden Faults and the Growing Risk To grasp the stakes, start with California's geologic DNA. Running nearly the length of the state, the San Andreas Fault is an infamous landmark, etched in the popular imagination, but representing just one strand in a complex network of shifting rock. The USGS, in its latest studies, has flagged something alarming. At many places along the San Andreas Fault, the average time between large earthquakes has already been surpassed. Imagine a clock whose chimes are not simply counting down. They are overdue. But the San Andreas is not the only major concern. To the north, the Cascadia Megathrust Fault casts a long shadow. It stretches along the Pacific Northwest. And scientists, including those from the USGS, have described its potential to unleash a magnitude 8 or greater earthquake. Their language is direct. A magnitude 8 or greater earthquake today is not just possible, it is within the realm of scientific concern. In the calculus of seismic recurrence, some regions along these faults are now past due. What does this mean for California's urban heartlands, from the dense grid of Los Angeles to sprawl of San Francisco? These cityscapes, familiar from postcards and news feeds, are geologically newcomers resting upon a stage set in motion long before the first gold rush or freeway. This dissonance between the ancient and the modern leaves an uneasy question. Have we built our daily lives atop a ticking clock? Chapter 2. Stress, Water, and the Risk to the Ground Beneath Us If seismic risk forms the deep baseline of California's geological soundtrack, water supply and management provide the counterpoint. Here, human activity pulses as forcefully as any quake. The state has always been thirsty, but in recent years, a new crisis has sharpened focus. Too much groundwater is being pumped out, threatening buildings and infrastructure nationwide. The impacts are subtle but everywhere. Foundations settling at odd angles, roads forming waves, pipelines flexing under unseen pressures. What does it mean for a city to be stressed? WalletHub's strategic rankings for 2025 put some Southern California cities high among the most stressed nationwide. Headlines often focus on finances and commutes, but hidden beneath the surface is a deeper kind of tension. The USGS's mission adapts alongside these challenges. Within the 2025 budget, the agency proposes expanding the federal priority stream gauge network, another step toward monitoring the country's water pulse. Such efforts are far from abstract. The places where water is scientifically measured often overlap with locations most threatened by subsidence, infrastructural strain, and potential map redrawing shifts. So when groundwater pumping outpaces natural recharge, what invisible forces strain below our neighborhoods? Will the cumulative effects become the next chapter in California's saga of stress? Chapter 3. The Geography of Stress, 
from Fremont to Southern California. It's easy to see stress as a personal experience. Traffic jams, work deadlines, the rising cost of living. But in California, stress runs broader and deeper. The Remitly survey of 2025, capturing 4,500 voices, reinforced what many already know. Many Californians want to relocate for a better quality of life. Some seek quieter or less hectic towns. But even those who stay are living in places ranked, sometimes infamously, among America's most and least stressed. Start with Fremont. Studies name Fremont the least stressed city in California, an oasis in contrast to the state's other urban giants. But look wider and the picture changes. The 10 most stressed cities nationwide? Some Californian destinations place uncomfortably high. One report captured the mood. Beloved California destination named most stressed city in the state. It is a distinction no city desires, but one that feels as difficult to avoid as a long, dry summer. Southern California especially stands out. Cities in the region rank as stress leaders, facing chronic challenges like traffic, high living costs, and layered environmental threats. For all the measurements of pulse and mood, scientists repeatedly point to a still deeper form, the slow, grinding accumulation of physical stress beneath the very streets and buildings that define daily life. The paradox is stark. While most buildings are classified as low risk, over 99% in some city analyses, the real vulnerability lies not in individual structures, but in shared infrastructure under silent pressure. How do you measure a city's stress when so much lies hidden below the surface? Chapter 4. Water on the Move. Subterranean Stress and Its Human Footprint. Zoom in on California's water dilemmas, and the landscape tells a tale of necessity and scarcity. In the countryside, too little water brings dry riverbeds and threatened crops. In the cities, the quieter crisis is underground. Relentless groundwater extraction. New research puts a spotlight here, overlaying geologic cycles with today's thirst. The consequences creep in quietly, until, all at once, they don't. The ground under major cities is more porous than most realize. Every pump of groundwater increases subsurface stress. Buildings, those towers and broad boulevards, risk damage, not from lack of craftsmanship, but from the physics below. As deep aquifers empty, the land itself can compact and sink, a process called subsidence. This isn't limited to farmland or remote towns. California's urban regions sprawl over a patchwork of soils and sediments, some resilient, others dangerously prone to shifting with subtle changes in groundwater levels. Roads and railways must flex, sometimes imperceptibly, adapting to a shifting landscape. A highway might remain flat for years, only to buckle or crack as invisible layers beneath warp, sometimes in response to water withdrawals made far away. Layer onto this the constant pressure of urban development. As data centers and other infrastructure multiply, if most buildings are deemed low risk for now, what about the connecting systems between them? Will countless small stresses in pipes, foundations, and soil accumulate toward the next infrastructural crisis? Chapter 5 USGS Instruments Watching, Waiting, and Sounding the Alert The United States Geological Survey, USGS, acts as society's seismograph, delicately measuring not just the ground's movement, but our changing relationship with the land. Proposals in its 2025 budget to expand the federal priority stream gauge network imply a doubling down, more data collection, greater regional integration, and a commitment to tracking the shifting American water balance. Why does this matter? Understanding stress in California is an act of measurement, as much as of scientific reasoning. The USGS records not just earthquakes or water tables, but the long-term consequences of decades of choices. Deciding where to build, how to manage resources, which risks to accept or ignore. This challenge is shaped by California's distinctive culture. Hard facts on essential infrastructure, data centers, for example, or power and water usage, remain surprisingly elusive. Facilities often rent out power, cooling, and floor space, keeping specifics confidential. Scientists and policymakers therefore piece together risks based on indirect evidence, sensor readings, satellite imagery, statistical proxies. The result is a shifting map of uncertainty. USGS studies illuminate not just when or where the next big earthquake might happen, but how compounded stresses, quakes, subsidence from groundwater loss, 
gradual infrastructure fatigue can intersect. If monitoring is our first line of defense, how trustworthy is our vision when so much is left unseen due to proprietary secrecy or delayed reporting? Are we steering California's future with clear eyes or through a haze of missing data? Chapter 6 Invisible Infrastructure When Risk and Resilience Collide For most Californians, infrastructure is background. A bridge glimpsed from a bus window, pipes buried and forgotten, systems humming out of sight. Interruptions are rare enough to stay remarkable. But for engineers and city planners, risk is ever-present. How do you future-proof networks challenged both by nature and decades of past decision-making? Here's the reality. While the majority of buildings in surveyed California cities are classified as low risk by recent analyses, the links between them are more fragile. Pipelines flex under shifting soils. Utility corridors often follow the path of least resistance, sometimes traversing liquefaction zones or active faults. Roads and bridges accumulate stress quietly for years. Add to this the subtle spread of data infrastructure. Information about the state's vital data centers, backbones of commerce and communication, is difficult to obtain. Most rent out their facilities without sharing key details of their operations or demands. But together, these networks increase reliance on resources already in competition with seismic and hydrologic hazards. The takeaway, citywide risk is less about isolated buildings, more about the shared systems they rely on. Resilience demands new thinking, not just about what could fail, but about how separate hazards might combine into greater threats. Could the next major disruption be caused by shifting ground? a burst water main, or a blackout, perhaps sparked by the overlap of all three, when defending against the unexpected. Chapter 7. Tectonic Reckoning, When Averages No Longer Apply If California's character includes periodic shaking, USGS data underscores a growing uncertainty. For years, expectations were anchored on patterns, average intervals between earthquakes, typical groundwater recharge rates, the slow pace of infrastructure decline. But what happens when those averages no longer apply? Recent reports from the USGS are clear. At many sites along the San Andreas Fault, the average intervals between significant earthquakes now exceed the calculated mean. For geologists, this is not mere trivia. It's a red flag. Tectonic stress is not dispersed by gentle shifts. It accumulates, quiet until released. Each year beyond the average is another year for stress to build. While seismic risk is certain over the long term, Recent calm is deceptive, a quiet tension before the next disruption. Further, this interacts with human activity. A magnitude 8 quake on the San Andreas, or the Cascadia megathrust, would test every system and protocol built under less exacting conditions. Is California truly ready for a rupture that defies the averages? What will follow when the clock resets in an instant and decades, maybe centuries, of energy is released? Chapter 8 everyday life above a gathering storm. Across city centers and cul-de-sacs, California life unfolds with optimism. Children play outdoors, commuters hurry over bridges, festivals fill neighborhoods, many rebuilt after hardship. Yet, it is this normalcy that gives USGS data its resonance. For most, stress is personal or economic. Surveys like Remitley's tap into that fact, framing relocation as escape from daily burdens. But there is another tension in the background, the knowledge, sometimes unspoken, that all of life's routines rest on ground whose stability is, from a geological perspective, temporary. The paradox is plain. Fremont, deemed the least stressed California city, shares the same seismic and hydrologic framework as more famously taxed regions. Southern California hubs, regularly topping national stress lists, are places of innovation and ambition yet also intersections of multiple risks. The science offers some reassurance. Analyses show that across these cities, the risk to individual buildings is low. The vast majority are stable, statistically. Still, the margin is not as wide as it seems. Groundwater extraction, rainfall shifts, gradual soil compression, all combine in ways only partly visible from street level. Day to day, these processes seem to make little difference. Year to year, they rarely make news. But with enough time or the right trigger, Stress can become crisis, a collapsed road, a train delay from a sunken track, a breached water main. Chapter 9. The Unfinished Map, Choosing What We Risk. 
At the core of all this data discussion and planning is a fundamental question. Who decides what level of stress is acceptable? The USGS can map faults and monitor water tables. Cities can strengthen building codes and emergency systems. But none of this locks risk away. Most acute are moments of transition. Whether it's expanding water monitoring networks in 2025 or the ongoing shift of populations seeking a better quality of life, underlying decisions have sweeping effects. Part of the story is information. Facilities that provide modern life's digital backbone, data centers, utility corridors, are shielded by layers of proprietary secrecy. This not only complicates risk assessment, but also introduces another kind of stress, a society functioning with incomplete knowledge, relying on systems built to largely invisible specifications. Will California's next generation inherit stronger resilience or a hidden burden of worn systems and masked vulnerabilities? How far can we stretch the present, literally and figuratively, before underlying stresses become the next disaster. California's stress, in every sense, is a sum of unacknowledged risks and chosen priorities. The story remains open. The ground is unsettled. The future, as uncertain as the Pacific at dusk. Chapter 10. A pause in the tension. California's allure is unmistakable. The foggy headlands of the north, the sun-washed valleys of the south, a place built on promise and reinvention. But new data and analysis from the USGS and related studies remind us to see beyond the postcard. They ask us to look under the web of freeways, the mosaic of neighborhoods, the relentless forward push of growth. The forces revealed in the 2025 reports, seismic cycles that come in silence, water tables depleted by thirsty cities, infrastructural networks pulled taut, are not mere background. They are the rhythm of California's story, unfolding regardless of our attention. Cities like Fremont, for now, hold the lowest measures of stress. Elsewhere, including many Southern California hubs, daily life is more pressured, the ground less tranquil. Yet everywhere, one question persists. Are we prepared for what lies beneath? The final answer does not rest solely with policy or science. It lives in our daily choices, where to live, what to value, how much to remember the real history written in slow drips and sudden shakes. In California, stress is as much about attention paid as about tectonics. If the surface is always shifting, perhaps the real lesson is to stay attuned to what lies beneath, to pick up on the subtle warnings and to ask, when will the invisible stresses below become too great to ignore? And as communities and individuals, what will our response be?